Welcome to a course on calculus. We are talking about the continuity of our functions and in this lecture too we are going to continue with the same. Here we are going to talk about the topological definition of a continuity uh, that you may uh, see on the screen. Okay, here in topological definition of a continuity what are we going to do today? Okay, first of all let us see what do we mean by the topological definition of a continuity and let us see the equivalence of the continuous function definition that we have seen. Okay, whenever we talk about the definition of a continuous function, what do we mean by continuous function? Okay, a function f is continuous at a particular point p in x. Okay, if for every epsilon positive there exists a delta positive such that dx of x comma p less than delta will imply dy of f of x comma f of p less than epsilon right this is the definition of a continuity here the equivalent statement that what we are going to do is that f inverse of v is open in x for all open set v in y okay first of all what do we mean by this f inverse of v it is going to collect the points in the metric space x okay such that this f of x is a member of v okay so this is the set f of v and we have to prove this set is going to be open whenever the set v is open okay let us start the proof formally uh, let us assume the function f is continuous on x if the function is assumed to be continuous on x it means what f is continuous at all points of x okay on all the points of x that we have the continuity okay so the continuity means the thing that we have seen here right so this we must remember okay so let us do the thing now let us assume v as some open set v v n open set in y then we will have to prove what we have to prove f of v sorry f inverse of v is open in x this is what we have to prove okay since v is assumed to be an open set in y all the points of v okay so it is given that v open in y which means all points of v are interior points right okay by interior point what do we mean there exists some neighborhood of the points okay uh, without loss of generality let us take f of p is a member of v since the elements the images of the elements in x will be in uh, y so we may assume f of p is a member of v okay then there exists a positive radius okay such that neighborhood of f of p with the specified radius is going to collect the points in y such that the metric that is the distance between the points and the collection of points is less than okay strictly less than epsilon this is a subset of v okay let us mark this as equation one so till now what we have done we have just made use of the definition that definition of open set okay we have assumed v is open set in y and we have taken some point in v and we found some neighborhood which is completely contained in v right now uh, now we are going to make use of the continuity of the function f okay just a minute okay uh, f is continuous at 
P. This implies what? For every epsilon positive, there exists a delta positive such that dx of x comma p less than delta will imply dy of f of x comma f of p is less than epsilon. Okay, let us mark this as equation 2. Now we will have to compare equation 1 and 2 and see what happens. See, here what we have all those points which satisfy this condition will be a member of this neighborhood. Right? Now, if some x satisfies this condition, this will imply this condition. So, uh, comparing 1 and 2, what we get? So, we get all these f of x are members of neighborhood of f of p with radius epsilon, which is a subset of v. Right? So, this means what? f of x is a member of v. And this means what? We know that f inverse of v is the collection of points x in x such that f of x is a member of v. Right? So, here we have f of x is a member of v. This means what? The collection of points in x such that dx of x comma p less than delta will be a subset of f inverse of v. Right? This is what we get, right? So, when we have f of x belongs to v, this implies, using this implies x belongs to f inverse of v. We do not have any guarantee that only these x is a member of f of v. So, we get this is a subset of f of v. Hence, we get some neighborhood of P which is completely contained in F inverse of V. Right? So, this tells us all points of f inverse of v are interior. Okay, because we have taken an arbitrary point and proved that is an interior, the neighborhood of that point is completely contained in this. So, all points of f of v are interior and this proves f inverse of v is open. Right? Now, conversely, what should we do? Conversely, first of all, what do we assume? We assume f inverse of v is open in x for every open set v in y. So, this is the assumption that we make and with this assumption, we have to prove f is continuous. How are we going to do it? Let us see. Okay. Uh, just a minute. Okay. How are we going to do it? Let us take some known open set in V. Okay. Sorry. Open set in Y. Let V be the collection of... Uh, just a minute. Let V be the collection of points Y in Y such that dy of uh, f of p comma y is less than epsilon. What we have actually done? Here v is a neighborhood of f of p with radius epsilon. Okay. We know that every neighborhood is open. So, V is an, uh, hence we get V is an open set. 
if it is so f inverse of v is also open this is by our assumption okay since f inverse of v is open all the points of f inverse of v is an interior point okay uh, for a point p in f inverse of v okay we have the guarantee that f of p is a member of v so p is a member of f inverse of v there exist a positive radius that radius we denoted by delta okay such that what is going to happen neighborhood of p with radius delta is going to collect the points x in x such that dx of x of p is less than delta so this is going to happen right ah wait this neighborhood is completely contained in f inverse of v so all the points x is a members of f inverse of v that is if a point satisfies this condition dx of x x comma p less than delta will imply these points are in f inverse of v and this implies f of x is a member of v so if it is being a member of v what is going to happen this will satisfy dy of f of p comma y sorry here uh, okay sorry uh, so this is not why this has to be uh, this has to be uh, f of x so f of x is less than epsilon so finally what we have we have dx of x comma p less than delta implies dy of f of p comma f of x is less than epsilon hence the function f is continuous at the point p right and the choice of p was arbitrary so since p is an arbitrary choice the function f is continuous at all points of x that is f is continuous on x and this completes the proof thank you for watching